So the motivation for this project is relatively straightforward. So the COVID-19 has been a global pandemic that has created unprecedented economic and social disruption. And in particular, it has been a threat to older and disabled workers. And so let me just motivate why we should care about this group. So first, the pandemic had higher rates of mortality among those at older ages. And also prior literature has shown that these groups of individuals are more vulnerable to permanent labor market exits during recessions. So with this in mind, what do we do in this paper? So we're gonna ask two key questions. So first, how have older workers employment outcomes evolved over the course of the COVID-19 pandemic? And second, did the COVID-19 pandemic result in changes in social security, disability, and retirement applications? We're gonna to bring together three different sources of, of data. So first, let me talk about these data. So we're gonna use the current population survey or the CPS. So this is individual level data, and we're gonna look at individuals ages 50 through 70 in the years January, 2015 through March, 2021. So these are going to provide us with employment characteristics of these individuals. So an individual can either be employed, unemployed, or no longer in the labor force. And then within the not in the labor force bucket, we're also going to be able to identify labor force exits due to retirement, disability, or reasons other than retirement or disability. We're going to pair this with SSA data on applications for disability. These data are going to be at the state by month level, again, for the same time period. And to make this these data comparable, we're going to convert the app number of applications to be applications per 100,000 people, specifically within the ages of 20 through 64. And so we can separate total disability applications into those that are for SSI, SSDI only, SSI only, and those concurrent for SSDI and SSI. And then finally, we're going to have retirement applications as well. Um, the caveat being that the retirement applications we only have at the national level. Um, but that being said, we still can we can still say a little bit about retirement as well. And we'll be able to disaggregate the total applications into those filed online versus those filed offline. And additionally, in the paper, we also incorporate Google Trends data, which I will not talk about today, but is in the paper if you are interested. So let me walk you through our key results. So first, I will walk you through the employment outcomes. The red vertical dashed line represents February 2020, and each dot on the graph you should think of as the effect in the month relative to what we would have expected without the pandemic. So think of what we would have expected given typical seasonality and trends. And then this deviation is normalized relative to the excluded year, which is February 2020. So we see a really sharp decline in employment of about 10 to 15 percentage points that occurs or peaks in April 2020. And then this slowly starts to recover over the course of the pandemic. However, it stays at a depressed level of about three to five percentage points. We see a slight increase in employed but absent. So these are people who are currently employed but absent from their job. They could be sick, they could be um, home from work for, for a variety of reasons on furlough. And this seems to be most prevalent in the early part of the pandemic and not really a factor later on. So where are these employment effects coming from? So we can look at both unemployment and labor force exits. So we see a matching but inverse increase in unemployment that mirrors the drop in employment. And we again see this peak in April 2020 and then steadily decline over the course of the pandemic. However, on the other side, in terms of labor force exits, we do see a relatively large increase in April 2020. However, unlike the employment effects, we actually see that the results maintain a heightened level. And when we take the labor force exits and we separate it into the three components that I mentioned, so for the younger older workers, so the 50 to 61 year olds, we see that the labor force exits are largely driven to live driven by reasons other than retirement or disability. Whereas for the 62 to 70 year olds, the largest component is due to retirement. And then the second largest is due to reasons other than uh, other than retirement and disability. 
In terms of magnitudes, the largest uh, factor in terms of our employment effects is coming from unemployment. So 60% of the employment effects are attributable to unemployment for the 50 to 61 year olds. This is about 50% of the employment effects for the 62 to 70 year olds. So for the 62 to 70 year olds, the labor force exits make up a larger fraction of the employment effects. Now let me turn to the disability applications. So what you're seeing here is a, a very sharp decline in disability applications. So in May 2020, this peaks at about seven fewer applications per 100,000 people. This is about a 15% decline in applications, and this hovers around four fewer applications per 100,000. If we break this down into its subcomponents, this is largely driven by a decrease in SSI only applications, so this accounts for 55% of the decrease and is a 22% decrease relative to the mean. Um, the next largest component is 30 is that 30 percent. 30% uh, of the decline in total disability applications is coming from concurrent applications, and this is an 18% decrease relative to the mean the pre COVID mean and then finally SSDI only applications are attributable to the rest of the total decline, but only represent about 16% of the total decline and a 7% decrease relative to the mean. Now we turn to retirement applications. On net, we actually see no change in retirement applications for Social Security. We do see an interesting shift in how people are applying. So we see a shift from applications being filed offline to being filed online. And so this might be interesting for Social Security going forward in that it might be a, a long-term shift in how people apply for these benefits. We do a lot of interesting heterogeneity in the paper that I'll just briefly highlight. So we do find that the reductions in disability are largely concentrated among more vulnerable groups. So these are individuals with lower education, more likely to be a minority, and those who live alone. Uh, in contrast, the increases in retirement are higher among high education, whites, and those who live alone. In terms of employment effects, we do see that employment reductions are larger in states that were more shut down. And mirroring this, we see larger increases in unemployment and retirement in these areas. However, we don't see the similar um, distinction in terms of disability applications. So places that were more shut down did not have fewer disability applications. And then finally, we see employment reductions are more pronounced in areas that have a higher share of older workers who were previously employed in non teleworkable and non essential jobs. So we think of these jobs as jobs that were probably most vulnerable to the COVID uh, pandemic. So just to conclude, let me talk about some potential mechanisms and, and what might be going on here and what we can say about these. So for each of the sets of outcomes, there's both demand side factors and supply side factors that may be at play. And in fact, we find evidence that both are present. So on the labor market outcome side, the demand side factors are things such as business closures due to shelter in place or other ordinances requiring businesses to shut down. This led to people being um, laid off. And we do find that employment dipped in to a further extent in areas that were more shut down. On the flip side, for supply side factors, these may be people who are not working due to caregiving responsibilities for a rational fear of contracting the virus or due to changes in work requirements and telework that, that led to separations. And so we are able to look at this in the Pulse survey. And what we find is that fear of contracting the virus doesn't appear to be driving the supply side factors. And then in terms of dynamics, we find that both supply side factors and demand side factors are at play. However, supply side factors are more prevalent in the early time period and demand side factor, or sorry, I said that backwards. So demand side factors are more prevalent in the early time period and supply side factors become more prevalent as, as the pandemic goes on. In terms of disability outcomes, the demand side factors are things such as actual reductions in disability. We look at this in the CPS and find a small reduction in people self-reporting disability. Um, the caveat being these are not work-related disabilities. These are your standard 
CPS disability questions, such as do you have trouble with vision, um, what, climbing stairs, and so forth. There's also the explanation that expanded UI benefits or the stimulus payments may have led people to either delay or, or not apply altogether. Um, we do see in, in, in the Pulse survey that most people didn't change their decision to apply for Social Security. However, uh, there is a non-trivial group, about 7 to 10 percent, who decided not to apply, and this is larger among UI recipients. And then finally, there's supply side factors. So many Social Security field offices closed during the pandemic. And additionally, some people may have had lower access to internet and with library closures and so forth may have not been able to apply. Um, we do find in terms, in regards to this, we don't see that there were larger decreases in applications in places that were more shut down. Um, however, what is consistent with this is we do see larger reductions in SSI rather than SSDI, which could also point towards an access story, given that the SSI population tends to be more vulnerable. And then finally, in terms of supply side factors, there's also the possibility that people were not able to certify their medical conditions, given that um, non-urgent medical office visits were delayed or, or closed down. Um, however, if, if this story were at play, we would have expected there to be a recovery in applications following offices reopening, and, and we don't find any evidence of that. Uh, we hope we, you check out our paper. Thank you.